Um, what is your name and where are you from? My name is Paula Clark and I'm from Springfield, Missouri. And we are in Springfield. This is Galloway Creek Greenway. Creek, Creek Greenway. And you're out for a walk? Yes. And uh, do you have a COVID story? Did you, you said that you have had it. I have had it. Um, I, I never was afraid of it. Um, and I think that's because I don't watch the regular news channels at all, and I just had no fear of it. And so I knew I had no fear before I got it. And yeah, I, I was um, going out and going to dances uh, and, and without masks. And I know that there were people who thought that wasn't uh, a, a good behavior. It wasn't fair to other people. And I felt like other people who are out there dancing, they feel the same way I do, that, that this is not that scary of a thing. If we are willing to expose ourselves to it, that shouldn't bother anybody else. That was my thinking anyway. So I, I did, um, yeah, my boyfriend apparently, got it and gave it to me <laughs> and when I first uh, realized that was probably what I had I looked on the CDC website which says this is milder than the flu unless you are having some kind of medical problems you don't need to seek medical attention so I didn't the only thing is what, what time of year was this October last October 2020 okay. and um, it just takes a long time I had a low-grade fever, um, and I was nauseated. No, my stomach hurt <laughs> a lot of the time. So it wasn't fun, but it was milder than the flu, but it just seemed to go on forever. But I have to tell you, I had the London flu back in 1972, right after I got married, and it went on two weeks. I thought it was never going to end, and that's how this was. And um, But I just went to bed and stayed in bed, and, and uh, eventually, yeah, I... After I would, thought I was coming down with it, I had been with my daughter and son-in-law um, one evening, had dinner there. We didn't hug or kiss or anything, but just by apparently being in the room or whatever, I gave it to them. Uh, and my granddaughter was six. Um, and I know they had it because they were tested um, and they knew they had it. And then they were around my niece a day later, and she caught it two days after that. So uh, the gestation period seemed to be two days. Um, anyway, so we all had it, and what we did was we had a COVID party. <laughs> My son-in-law came and got me, and yeah, we would just sit around and watch television, because, well, okay, my daughter and I didn't want to get up and do a lot, but I could not tell with my son-in-law, who's 36, that it affected him at all. He was uh, building a new closet and doing this, that, and the other. He did have it, but it didn't seem to affect his activity level. It, and, uh, yeah. So I, I never had any fear before. So you I had a COVID uh, party with your family, and you all had COVID at the same time. Yeah, we all stayed at their house for, I don't know, uh, four or five days, because I'd already had it a week before I went over there. And uh, so... You know, we kind of, well, and by the, my, my son-in-law's best friend was there too, because he got it too. So we all just stayed at their house and watched TV and kept to ourselves and, and didn't go out anywhere during that time, because, um, you know, you don't want to give it to anybody, even though I don't feel like it's dangerous. I realize other people are very fearful. And, um... What do you think of the numbers that they're putting out there, the media? Well, again, I told you, I don't watch the regular news. Um, They're saying 530,000 dead. Um, well, but why aren't there any reports of the flu? What happened to the people that die from the flu every year? I'm ha I have to think there are those, some of those that they're reporting as COVID aren't. I, I guess I don't trust the, the tests either. I don't think how, that they're completely reliable, but... I don't know. I, I think, and again, that's what I've read, is that you have to have some pre-existing condition. If you have diabetes, yeah, you should be worried because you've got a pre-existing condition. It, it affects your vascular system, um, compromises your vascular system, so you're, you're, you should probably be worried. 
if, if you have something like that. But a normal, healthy person, I don't think should be worried. And uh, so do you know anybody that got it very badly, had to go to the hospital or uh, even yes. died of it? Yes. My, my boyfriend's roommate, but you have to keep in mind he was 82 years old. He had diabetes. He wasn't taking care of himself. And he already did not want to live <laughs> before he ever got COVID. He, you know, he was divorced twice. He was estranged from his kids. My, my boyfriend had already said, his pastor said, he just doesn't want to live. Well, you know, when you're in that kind of situation when you've already, your body's already compromised with diabetes and mentally, you just don't want to tough it out. Well, and also I have to say that he wasn't on a ventilator, but he was on oxygen and he said, I don't want to take it anymore. So some of it was his choice. I, I don't know if he would have died eventually, even if he had stayed on the oxygen. I just don't know. But and uh, so what do you think uh, going forward? Uh, do you wear masks now or do you socially distance? In places where they distance? require, uh -huh. where I'm indoors. And I try to be respectful of people who are fearful, but I, I also feel sorry for people who are so afraid of something that, that you know, for a normal, healthy person, it's not anything to be more afraid of than you would be of the regular flu that goes through every year and kills a lot of people. And la um, so going forward, how do you think uh, we are, are going forward? Uh, is, is, are masks going to be the new normal? Uh, are we going, are, are, by the way, are you getting any vaccinations yourself? It depends. I'm, I'm flying um, on May 1st. If I have to get a vaccination to fly, I will. And but, then, uh, but going rather forward. Rather not, I've had it already. And I know, if I tell anybody I've had it, they go, well, you can get it again. So I give up. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, going forward, do you think this is the new normal or are we, are we coming to the end of it? There's, there's a new uh, variant out there, the UK virus. virus. Um, what do you think, what's, what's in, our, in it for our future? We've already had it one year recently, uh, the anniversary of one year of it being declared a pandemic. Do you, what I should we I expect? I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't make that kind of prediction. If I were in charge, I would unmask everybody. And you would unmask everybody? Yeah. And I know that sounds heartless, but I would just let it, let people build up their immunities and let it run its course like we do with regular flus. Very good. I thank you so much. It's the 16th of March. We're here in Springfield, Missouri. Thank you very much. Thank you.